morning, everyone. My name is Zeynep Akata. I'm a, my group is a part of Cluster of Excellence Machine Learning at the University of Tübingen. Today, I'm going to talk about modeling conceptual understanding in image reference games. Um, this is a paper that was published at NeurIPS 2019. Um, I would like to thank the organizers for inviting me to give, give this talk and thank you for attending the talk. I will start with a background where um, I will try to explain what explanations and um, uh, how explanations and learning are related. And then um, I will give uh, several background papers uh, that explain uh, how we came to that idea that I'm going to present uh, next, which is modeling conceptual understanding with image reference games. And then I will end my talk with a conclusion. Let's start with the background. I think the best way to, um, to show this idea is via an example, how learning and explanation uh, is related. Let's see, we have uh, encountered two different classes that we have never seen before. They are called GLURPS and DRANS. And uh, we are trying to build a classifier which is able to distinguish between these uh, classes. We might uh, indicate that the classifier should learn the shape of the head when distinguishing these classes or the color or the shape of the body or the, uh, the way these objects stand. If we choose the shape of the head to be the distinguishing property and uh, classify these objects, then we see that uh, we make 25% um, mistakes where uh, one of the uh, DRANS is classified as GLORPS because the shape of the head might not be the distinguishing property in this case. If we go back to the problem again and look more closely what would be the distinguishing properties, um, again looking at the, uh, the body of the object doesn't necessarily the a distinguishing property or the colors, I, it's difficult to see if there are any patterns even. Um, so, but if we look at the way the, these objects stand, the feet are either pointy or flat and depending on um, if it is, if they contain flat feet, then these objects are called trends apparently in this example. And um, if they have pointy feet, they are called glorbs. So glorps might have different shape of the heads or bodies, but all their feet are pointy. So it seems this attribute is the most um, distinguishing, the highly distinguished distinguishing property. Now, based on this idea, we have used in computer vision a concept called attributes and attributes can um, be cast as a way to explain a classification decision. So uh, for example, um, we see that in uh, here we have two different classes of birds, Eastern Bluebird and Cardinal. These objects might not be familiar to us if, unless we are bird uh, watchers. Um, and then we see that these objects have uh, many shared and different properties like blue crown, white belly, black eyes are called attributes. And the aim is to build a vectorial representation of these classes. So um, we see that the first object, Eastern Bluebird, contains blue crown and we uh, put a one in this uh, part of the vector for Eastern Bluebird and zero for Cardinal. And um, some of these attributes are common, so black eyes attribute is going to have the value of one in both cases. And then um, the orange property, orange belly property is um, applies for Cardinal only, then Cardinal will have the property. The, value one and Eastern Bluebird will have the value zero. And um, when we compare these different classes, now we realize that ev every class to are, don't appear equidistant to each other in this space, but similar classes which, uh, which share more attribute properties are um, going to be embedded close to each other and far away from the others. And we can exploit this property to learn better, more explainable classifiers. Taking this one step further, we can use nature language as explanations, and uh, this can facil facilitate a better communication between the user and the machine. 
So um, let's say in this scenario, the uh, user has partial observa observability of the environment and the machine is able to answer the questions that the user might have. The user looks at this uh, bird image and then asks what type of bird is this. The model says it's a cardinal. It's not, um, although it is the correct decision, it's not easy to um, understand unless you are a field, ex field expert if this is a correct decision or not. Then uh, um, taking this one step forward and in, uh, creating decision creating explanations from this decision looks like this. Um, it is, the decision is followed with a because clause and it talks about the visually distinguishing properties of this object and those properties that appear in the image. So the uh, red bird, red beak and black face are class specific properties um, that are uh, important to distinguish cardinals from other uh, birds. And also these properties specifically appear in this image. So an explanation sentence should contain these properties, both class specific and image relevant. Then uh, another type of explanation, which we call counterfactual explanations, is arguing why an object is not classified as a different class. Why not a vermilion flycatcher? Then the model needs to think about what that object might look like and what are the distinguishing properties of that other object and those properties that don't appear in the image in our current image of interest so it says it's not a vermilion flycatcher because it doesn't have black wings to uh, generate this kind of explanation several attempts have been made i have um, cited two of them here so um, both of these models are post hoc explanation models, which means um, there is a neural network that makes the decision and another neural network looks at that decision and the input and uh, generates a justification text. So the uh, language model takes uh, as a conditioning variable, the image feature and the class decision, uh, the label decision that comes from the convolutional neural network. And, um, the sen an exemplar sentence is generated. This red bird has a red beak and a black face. So this sentence, to improve the image relevance of this sentence, we um, divide it into uh, attribute chunks with using a part of speech tagger. So there is no learning really, um, involved here. And then uh, this gives us noun phrases like red beak, red bird, black face. And the separately trained explanation grounder on a trained on a different data set um, is a, a, um, a used to ground these phrases in the image. And then uh, another sentence is an alternative sentence is generated, and then these uh, noun phrases are grounded. And then uh, using the uh, cumulative score that um, adds up all the matching scores between every noun phrase and the uh, bounding box. Uh, determines which sentence is more image relevant. So there is a phrase critic that is a, um, a ranking model that says the first sentence is more related because uh, red beak is more related to this image. And then um, moving more towards how to make a mental model of the communication partner. This uh, paper is very interesting. Um, so here the authors present a Bayesian computational model of theory of mind that aims at inferring the beliefs and the desires of an observed agent. So um, the scenario is, food, is called food trucks and the agents are navigating in a simple grid world. The agent is a triangle and the three trucks are marked by letters. K means Korean. L means Lebanese and M is Mexican. In this scenario, on this day, the K and L trucks are present, but the M truck uh, hasn't come to the campus. The agent leaves his office where he can see the K, K truck. Um, and then, but walks past it in the, as shown in the second frame. And then it goes to the other side of the building where he sees the L truck parked in this frame 
and then he turns around and goes back to the K truck. Now, from this behavior, can we say which is his favorite truck and which truck did he believe was parked on the other side of the building? This uh, uh, paper is trying to answer these questions. In their experiments uh, shown in these graphs, the red bar plot shows the mean human judgments about these desires and beliefs with the standard error bars after viewing um, the agent, agent's path up to frame three. And then uh, the desire ratings um, are given for each food track, K, L, M, N. Uh, and the belief ratings are given for the agent's internal belief um, about the occupant of the far parking uh, spot. And the, all, all of the ratings are on a seven point scale. So in this uh, scenario, the participants, there were 16 participants, judged that the agent most desired the M truck and that um, he falsely believed that it was probably present in the far spot. So the, uh, the model that is proposed in this uh, paper predicts these judgments accurately. And then the uh, second paper is called Machine Theory of Mind. And in this paper, the authors propose a neural network model that uh, predicts future actions and intents in, a, in novel scenarios based on past observed behavior. So let's see in, the, in this figure, the uh, past trajectory of, um, of an example agent is shown. The colored squares indicate for, uh, four objects. Um, orange, blue, pink, and green. And red arrows indicate the position and action taken by the agent. So B is an uh, example query. It's a state from a new Markov decision process. And uh, the black dot uh, indicates the agent position. The uh, theory of mind nets uh, the model proposed in this paper. It's a prediction for the agent's net next action. And this is, this is the top uh, plot. And uh, object consumed at the end of the episode, that is the uh, bottom, for the uh, query of the MDP in B, so the uh, B figure. And given the past observation of how the agent behaved in the plot in the figure A. And then uh, the, um, the last figure shows the theory of mind uh, nets prediction of the su successor representation for the query B um, using a discount factor. And um, the darker shade, the darker red, indicates higher expected discounted, discounted uh, state occupancy. The third paper that I would like to um, talk about is um, mind aware multi-agent management reinforcement learning it's called um, so this paper explores self-interested worker agents so there are three workers um, which have to be motivated to perform a task and they don't necessarily like the task and the manager agent has to infer the preferences of the workers and then adjust their bonus pay in a way such that the additional reward convinces the worker agents to work together efficiently, effectively. Okay, uh, so the first is, uh, this figure is the illustration of the problem setup. The workers have different skills uh, shown in red and different preferences shown in blue uh, for different tasks, A, B, C. Um, and the, the height of the, uh, the bar shows how much they are skilled or how much they prefer this, um, this task. And then these um, agents or the workers are self-interested and they perform tasks that they prefer the most. So they, uh, to achieve optimal collaboration, a manager who doesn't necessarily know the preferences of the agents has to uh, infer the workers' minds, how they think, what they prefer. 
and assigns right bonuses to workers for finishing the specified tasks in uh, the form of contracts. So as a consequence, um, the workers will adjust their intentions and work together accordingly. Um, so the, the workers initially um, all want to do task B in this figure, um, but to finish all the tasks, the manager has to pay bonus to worker one, a, a larger bonus, more bonus to worker one and two, so that they will perform A and C, uh, sorry, uh, the A and C tasks uh, respectively, so that the task is done, although they, they don't necessarily prefer to do these tasks, but because they are good at performing these uh, tasks, they should be given um, preference. Okay, this brings me to uh, modeling conceptual understanding with image reference games. So we have a, um, um, a model that tries to form opinions about the users the same way as the theory of mind um, um, agent was working. But our task is slightly different. We have constructed an image reference game where there are, uh, we show two images of um, similar objects to two different agents. So there is no user, but two agents are playing this game with each other. And uh, the task is to, uh, the first one is, is called the speaker is going to select one of the images and then uh, describe that image to the second one. And uh, of course, the, uh, the first agent wants to uh, make the second agent choose the correct image. So it chooses uh, to talk about the most discriminative property. However, there is a problem in this communication because the second agent has a, um, um, has a difficulty or a disability to understand every concept. In this example, the second agent is colorblind. So if the chosen attribute is about colors, then the second agent is not going to be able to choose the correct uh, image. Over time, these agents play this game with each other many times and then the first one figures out that the second one is not able to understand colors so starts talking about um, shape related properties it says round and then the second agent is able to say which object the first one has picked it's a simple communication so the uh, the model looks like this we have a speaker agent and the, and the population of listeners. In each episode that is marked with K, um, the speaker and the listener encodes an image pair XT and XC using their perceptual modules. The perceptual module, uh, see, the perceptual module um, has the symbol theta and uh, sorry, phi, uh, the phi S and phi L uh, are the, for the speak, stand for the speaker and the listener. So the speaker selects a K, the first the, one of the attributes, to describe the image and then using a policy, policy PI. And um, so this P and V, the value function, are conditioned on the image representation and the agent embedding. The agent embedding is, acts like a memory of the entire gameplay. So, and then the listener guesses XT given AK with a reward RK. The reward is the only signal that goes back from the listener to the speaker that uh, is used to update the belief of the speaker about the listeners. But because there was a, a mistake in, or a noise introduced in understanding of the listener, um, the, all the color uh, related attributes uh, have um, extreme noise. So the agent perf uh, behaves randomly when a color attribute is presented. So uh, the reward is either uh, plus one or minus one. Randomly, it is decided. And if the uh, um, shape related attribute is presented, then the reward is always, always one. So we assume that the agents are uh, consistent and coherent. Okay, now I will talk about the differences between the uh, different components of the model. 
So we have perceptual modules. Um, here we extract image level features using a CNN. This CNN is trained on, uh, on a separate task on ImageNet. Um, it's a ResNet. And um, we have an, a linear layer on top of it that predicts uh, at, uh, attribute level features. And these attribute level features, like I described before, each element in this uh, phi vector uh, represents a separate attribute. And then the, uh, the size of, the, of A uh, is the number of visual attribute labels, and it is the same for every class. The, uh, the speaker uh, uses phi S, and the, there are multiple, so there is only one speaker, and there are multiple listeners, and uh, they have the uh, uh, they are symbolized by their perceptual module is symbolized by phi L. The second component is the agent embedding module. Here we have a speaker that selects an attribute AK from uh, the difference between the predicted attributes for different images. And the listener selects an attribute AK uh, similarly from the difference between their um, uh, uh, their perceptual uh, modules, module outputs, and uh, it receives a reward based on the selected attribute. So uh, the agent embedding module is an LSTM, uh, and the hidden state, the HK, shows the hidden state, um, and this hidden state uses OK, which is a one-hot vector, which shows the index of the non-zero entry. Um, and this non-zero entry is AK, and its value is RK, the reward. Then uh, the next component is the policy learning, the green part of the framework, where we concatenate image, um, uh, image pair difference, the SK, the difference between the files, uh, we concatenate with the um, hidden unit activations of the agent embedding. And then we use a value function to, um, 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 we uh, predict the value by using AK, the attribute that is selected, to describe the XT, the selected image. And um, we learn it with, uh, with mean squared error using the reward. So we implement different policies in this framework. The first one is epsilon greedy policy. So it randomly samples an AK, an attribute with a probability epsilon, or greedily choose an AK based on the value, uh, the, max, the, uh, uh, the attribute that gives the maximum value. The second policy is active policy. We train it using policy gradient with a standard formulation. And then we have the third one is uh, these three, four, five are uh, baseline uh, strategies. The third one is random agent policy, which always selects an AK at random. Uh, so there is no learning involved. The fourth one is reactive policy. So it selects an AK, an attribute at random. Um, and if it encounters a negative reward, it samples a different attribute. But otherwise, it samples always the same attribute. Uh, the random sampling policy selects an attribute at random during N training episodes. So this, these are the episodes where the agents play the game with each other. And then greedily during M evaluation episodes. So if we compare uh, different learned policies versus baselines in one of the data sets, we see that uh, the random agent doesn't show any learning. It's a flat curve, increasing the number of games, and uh, we measure the average reward. The uh, random sampling improves over time quite uh, significantly as expected. And then uh, the reactive policy um, jumps quite high in the, um, um, the, during the practice episodes and then flattens, the curve flattens. And then we see that our models, um, the epsilon greedy and active policies that use the value function um, and the reward signals, they both perform 
uh, they both start from a better um, better level compared to the other uh, baseline po baseline policies, and also the increase in the accuracy uh, of the reward is quite significant, and then the curve is flattened. So we see that around uh, the game 40, this uh, problem converges. We see the same trend in other uh, data sets. So here I'm showing results with the CUB, the BIRDS data set, but we also show uh, in the paper experiments with animals with attributes, another data set that contains um, class-based attributes and uh, sun attribute data set that uh, has places and other fine-grained data sets that comes with class-based attributes. This uh, plot shows the necessity of agent embeddings, the memory, so to say. Uh, in the baseline where we don't have any uh, agent embeddings, there is no learning. Um, and uh, with agent embeddings, with the memory, with uh, theory of mind, basically, component, then the uh, results improve. We also evaluate the cluster quality. So um, as I mentioned before, although we have one speaker, we have a population of listeners. And the speaker needs to form an, op an opinion about uh, the identity of every population. So um, for that, we generate agent embeddings in, uh, in 50K episodes and we perform a k-means clustering on the agent embeddings. Um, so we have a certain number of clusters and then, the, uh, uh, and then we evaluate the variation of information where in this formula H is, um, indicates entropy and I is the mutual information. And this variation of information metric measures the amount of information needed to switch from one cluster to the other. Um, and we see that uh, with baseline, the variation of information is very high. Um, here, the lower, the low, the better, the lower, the better. And with our um, models, the epsilon greedy and the active policies, the uh, model indeed learns the identity of uh, every cluster population and um, learns how to communicate the, um, the predicted attributes better. Finally, I would like to show some qualitative results. Um, the, perhaps the most interesting qualitative results appear in the BIRDS data set. Um, so here first, the first line shows the discriminative, the most discriminative attributes uh, found by the per perceptual modules. And then the second row shows the chosen attributes. We see that in the first game, for all of these um, uh, reference game episodes, the most discriminative attribute is related to color. Indeed, um, as, as humans, we, we might also choose colors in, this, in these examples. And the chosen attribute is color too. But because the uh, listener is colorblind, the model is not able to pick the correct image. With game 10, um, um, we see that the highly, although the highly discriminative attribute it is still about colors, the model has learned to mention pattern-related attributes, spotted belly patterns instead of colors, for example. Um, although it still makes some mistakes in, in some cases. And then with game 100, the model has, uh, the speaker has learned that the, the color attributes are not uh, understandable by the second agent, by the listener agent. So although the most discriminative attribute is about color, the chosen attribute is about shapes. And then the game has converged. The listener is able to pick the correct image in every, um, every game. As a conclusion, um, I would like to say that, the, uh, that modeling conceptual understanding in this way is necessary to succeed in some tasks. And um, so the way, maybe this is not too far from the way people communicate with each other. We need to first understand who we are talking to 
to, to say, to uh, pick which language we are going to use. The formulation of uh, a models, uh, modeling, sorry, modeling uh, the other agents' understanding is important, and this allows XAI systems to tailor their explanations to specific users. So, uh, for example, if you are talking to a five-year-old about a mathematical concept, you are going to choose different words than uh, talking to a mathematician about the same concepts. And uh, in this paper, one of the contributions was the uh, agent embeddings, the learned agent embeddings, recovers a clustering over other agents' conceptual understanding. Where here we uh, uh, redefine conceptual understanding is how as how well um, uh, the clustering was performed in uh, the listener populations. If you are interested in learning more about this work, please uh, read this paper published at New York 2019. Um, and I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>